Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another video. Today, we're going to get started with the Mezco Toys Rumble Society Attica's Doom. So, let's get in with it. This guy is fun. Uh, it's your adventurer meets the, it's like, uh, it's going to be like adventurer meets Lovecraft. I wanted, I was going to say Cthulhu, but that's not true because he does meet Cthulhu. But the point is, is adventurer meets Lovecraft. And it's wild because you have to think of it like, this is what happens when you survive. And that's what's pretty cool about this. You'll see more of that in the story later. But I'm going to give you a glimpse into your boy Atticus too. This guy looks a lot of fun. He definitely has the old time feel of a pulp hero to him. But it's that version of magic that, that's thrown in there that gives it to you. Now with Lovecraft lore, which I found out is very expansive. Um, but even if you chop it down into little tiny bits, having just a little bit of that can drive a person mad. And what's cool about this is imagine being known as the one survivor of any of this. And that's what you get Atticus Doom with. So let's talk about our look. And here, guys, we have our Leviathan particle. And what's really cool about our Leviathan particle is that we can actually take it off from the hat. You can see here with the Leviathan particle here. Now, what happened here with his head, again, I'm going to leave that to the comic book. I haven't seen all of it, but just parts of it alone made me just wonder what's going on with that. And that Leviathan particle is at the top of the hat. So you'll see that there. And here we have this eyepiece here. It's called the Philosopher's Oculus. That is, it's really cool because you can actually take that out by popping out. I'm going to take this head off, right? And you can actually pop out the Oculus by popping off the brain. And there's going to be a piece that you can actually take out and use it as if it were an actual like item because it is. And what's really cool about that is this is like magic on magic. If I can actually get a nice zoom in on this, like this is crazy. Like he has an eye within his head, within his brain. And like I said, Lovecraft lore is crazy because there's just so much like wild, crazy stuff that you can do with it. And I just love the idea of it and just having that crazy start at the head literally is is just fun to me because we think of characters like Dr. Fate and Dr. Strange, but we never cover enough of that Cthulhu part of what happened when a person like that uses that sort of magic. So let's pop this back in. Boom. We could pop our head back on. And here we have a look with the rest of the body. I'm actually going to pop this as well back on. We have our ooh, let's fix our focus. So here we have our jacket looking really cool. This is wired. So this is going to actually add to your wired look as well, too. So you can move this around very much. And I like that because it gives you a lot of freedom to do floating levitation magic movement. With our arms, we have we can hit that T pose. Always very important for me with our articulation. We have our bicep swivel. So even with our jacket on, we can move with our bicep swivel. And we are double jointed arms. Very important, right? So we have that very captive look again if you want to capture those forms of magic our jacket is wired here through the front as well too so like i said when you want to do super captivating floating magical moves or lovecraftian lore stuff you can really get into the vibe of it because just opening up the jacket alone like look already we have a super nice vibe on the magic tip with this dude i love stuff like this this sets up some beautiful types of photographs that you can do. And it's crazy because you would think like, what is a guy in a business suit? Like, well, a nice suit and a trench coat going to do. I mean, have we not learned anything from Constantine when you do stuff like this? Like magic guys are not to be played with. So as we roll our arms back down, we're going to talk about our ab crunch and our upper body rotation. We have our buttons here. And as you can see here, we can literally tilt a little side to side, but if you want to get a little bit more room and see what's going on, we're going to pop these hands off. We're going to take our jacket off. Let's do that. So by taking our jacket off, we actually see what's going on under. And I really like the look of this. Again, this is completely different than what we've gotten so far. And I just like how stuff like this is always different. We have a very nice forward ab crunch, but because of the way the suit vest and the, and the sweater is, you won't see it, but the crunch does add, like, it, it does look really good going forward. Tilting side to side, as you can see here, the body begins to contort. It does have a nice swivel from side to side as well, too. With our legs, we can move forward going up. 
we have double jointed legs. We have a leg outward, leg inward as well too. So you can crush legs and do what you gotta do if you wanna do any sitting chair poses. So let's leave it like this. Let's, let's leave them like this. Hands off is, oh, let's talk about our ankle articulation. So we actually have, uh, oh, that's actually a pretty good movement going outward and inward. That's a very nice different jump, even going forwards, but not so much going backwards. So we can begin to talk about our accessories. I'm going to actually leave the jacket off for a bit because I really like this look on Atticus. On one of our hands, which is going to be our right hand side, we actually have an eye on our fist. That's something I've noticed. And on the left hand, there's nothing. So let's keep that in mind for uh, what we got going on. And let's talk about our accessories. So let's take a second to jump into that. And now we're jumping into accessories. And this wig, it's crazy fun because literally I didn't know much about Lovecraft lore, but digging in a little bit for this made it very exciting to try out. And man, I gotta say, it's pretty crazy. For instance, we get something of an alternative sculpt with him called the Mantle of Madness. This is pretty cool because this is literally him channeling a piece of the ancient one Cthulhu. And it's really cool because you got to understand the type of power it takes to like withhold stuff like that to make sure that you literally don't lose control. So here we are with that sculpt on his body. Let's take a look. Yeah, that's a good look. And as you can see, the tentacles will slightly get in the way. But the cool thing about this is you can actually remove the scarf if you need to. I like to keep it there because I can't fold for crap. But yeah, this is pretty cool. Let's pop this sculpt off. Oh, actually, let's leave it on for a second. Because speaking of pieces of Cthulhu, you actually get alternative pieces. Where he channels fractions of Cthulhu via tentacles. You can attach these to the hands. And you're going to make sure you find the port. Just line it up. Get it in there. And this is going to get a little tricky because you clearly can't see what's going on in there. Right? But once you find that port, you should be able to just snap it in. There we go. So you will get something like this. This is pretty cool. You also will be able to get a straight one that has bendy wire in it. This is really cool because, like I said, you can actually adjust this one to fold up this way or go the opposite way. And I really like how this is very seamless. So I know this couldn't be easy, right? This is pretty cool. You can curve it how you want, do what you need to. So you'll get two pieces of that. Let's pop this back off, pop our alt head, well, our mainstay head back on. So let's do that. Next up, oh, gotcha. <laughs> that was me using my magic. Next up, you get an item called the Nebulous Claw. The Nebulous Claw is really cool. Again, channeling other pieces of other elder, well, will they be eldritch gods or elder gods? But ancient gods, right? And what's really cool about that is that you, along with this, get a couple of effect parts, right? you'll get this kind of effect part. And this is gonna be for summoning portals and things like that. There will be a mini stand that you will get to plug into this stand. Now with that, you'll also get an alternate part that has his hand peeking out of it for portal pieces. And this is what's really cool, like I said before, is because there's lots of different actions that you can do with this. For instance, you can attach the nebulous claw into it, right? So let's say you're reaching into a portal, summoning your nebulous claw, you have this. So you want to use your stand of him using that claw. You will get a part here that allows you to attach that. You're going to see this little piece here. Nope, wrong way. So there you go. I have it upside down. <laughs> so yeah, you will get options with stuff like this. Or you can just attach the nebulous claw to the normal hand you see there. You will also get other effect part pieces for your hands. These will attach here at the wrist, similar like what you did with Dr. Fate, the Mezco, and you will get other effect parts that attach to it, like this small piece, well, smaller effect part, I should say, with rounded Cthulhu-like symbols, or should I say Lovecraftian symbols? I keep saying Cthulhu because you read so much about him, but there's so much more that attach right on, and they are pretty strong. You'll also get an alternate one, which has like a more big summoning of, ooh, there we go. 
<laughs> I had it upside down. But yeah, a big summoning piece. And this, again, plugs right in. And you will get two of these. So actually, you can use them at the, both time, at the same time if you want. Next up, we get alternative hands and other pieces. And we're going to get into that. This is something called the Medusa hand. This is pretty cool. I like this little snake hand. It, instead of it being like snake hair, it's literally a hand that does like the Medusa effect. Paralyzes and turns to stone. I like this. And it's soft too, so you don't have to worry about like freaking out or breaking this. And I love that kind of stuff. Next up, you'll get alternative hands. So you'll get some open action palms. Really cool. You will get a item holding hand for your left hand. And this will be for your goblin chalet. I love this. I love stuff like this. This is just a really cool effect part. Oh, staff. <laughs> yes, so this is really cool. Next up, you'll also get this hand right here. And this hand is really cool because it comes with something like, uh, it's called the cinder, cinder palm. That's I'm trying to remember these things. You'll also get an effect part for your cinder palm to add on. Let's make sure I get to focus on there. So with the Cinder Palm, it's semi-soft to allow you to get the hand in there. But as you can see here, what you'll do is just glide the fingers into their grooves, including the thumb. And this way it may get a little tricky, but not impossible. Because once you glide it in, you actually literally have a flaming hand. This works really well under light, pro tip shine some light through that you're gonna have a great time with lighting on that right and then we have this and this feels like the necronomicon <laughs> because a book like this just looks scary you know it just it looks scary and then we can there's a little latch here that i always have trouble opening up so what i do is i literally i push one end down and it opens up there we go and as you can see, it actually has real pages in there, like legit real pages. Like this is wild. And it's pretty scary. So I'm going to close this because <laughs> even though I'm excited, I shouldn't keep reading anything like that. It scares me. There will also be a placement holder with your stand so you can place your book inside in case you want to do it like any levitating stuff or you want to do cool moves like opening it up. I'm no good at Photoshop, so you can't I can't do anything like that, but. I love stuff like this. Add-ons are awesome. Now, without further ado, what I am going to do is I'm going to take the time, pop his jacket back on, jump into size comparisons, and I'll see you guys in a sec. Hey guys, welcome back. And before I even begin to jump into size comparisons, there's even more things to cover that I got too excited with. So please bear with me, I apologize. But I did forget to talk about the cane holding hand for our goblin chalet. There is a dedicated hand for holding it. As you can see, it slides right into the grooves and it does hold it up on its own so it's one of those things where it looks really cool because you know it just adds to the 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 age-old vibe of dudes carrying canes and i just love stuff like that let me just find this right groove as i kind of peel back the jacket a little bit i wanted to definitely get you guys a nice vibe for him i'm going to show you guys right now and it's one of these things i truly enjoy because like look right you got him set up like this you got him looking cool posed up right i'm just gonna grab my my phone real fast and look right look at that look at that from that angle it's just one of those things where stuff like this just photographs so well and looks so cool so i just wanted to show off something like that because we also have other things to talk about i also in my infinite excitement right we actually have this where we can pop these into his eyes and i'm still not used to this because uh man like when i first did this it blew my mind and i just i, I cursed <laughs> so i didn't want to put it on here but look at this look at how cool this is that you can like we thought having like the skull head would like oh another skull no look at this look like this is really really cool and to even add on further to this effect we have this effect here and this is like a smoke mist that kind of like i don't know like it, it's hard to explain it because what you do is you're going to pop this on and leave it. You're going to find there it is, the right groove. And like I said, this is one of those things where it adds to the vibe of that mysticism with him. You know, 
this is really cool because I can just rotate a little bit. I can have a little bit of articulation to give me that extra vibe. But just stuff like this is just so cool. And like I said, you just don't see too many mystical things like this done in any shape or form. And I like that Mezco is just doing something different. Actually, I'm going to leave the eyes in as we begin to jump into cool size comparisons. I'm going to leave him up like this because I just like the way he looks like this. Stand him up proud, tall and strong. And now we will officially jump into the size comparisons. Now, obviously, I want to compare him to other Rumble stuff. So first things first, here is a Gomez to size up next to him. And as you can see, he is a tad bit smaller. And that's pretty cool because, like I said, I like things being different sizes and getting different types of vibes from things. I don't like it when everything is the same height and it's supposed to be like this big, wondrous, different universe and everybody's six feet tall. That's not true. I'm short. I want to see other short characters. I'm here for this. <laughs> so here we have Hawk P40. Let's stand you back up for Hawk Knocks You Down. And as you can see, height-wise, we're getting something different already. And I like this, right? Let's remove these two guys. Next up, we have Baron Benz. Then we have my main man. Everyone knows I love him. We have Doc Knock. And I feel like these two are probably the best match for each other. Uh, these two, I feel like are, they have to meet up. I, I really hope that these two meet up, even if it's with Baron Benz, too. Because Baron Ben's origin is really is really vague. And I feel like all three of those guys could have a meetup at some point. So I really want these two to meet up at some point. Because Polk Cosmic and Pulp uh, Supernatural slash Street Supernatural, I'm here for it. I 100% am. And now we're going to size up with some other stuff. So here we are with an Articulated Icons Ninja. Here we are with a Kamen Rider. Here's Kamen Rider Kuga from SH Figure Arts. Looking pretty cool. And as you can see, he is indeed on the smaller side, but he does look good. Next up, we have a Marvel Legends Spider-Man. And then we have a Lightning Collection Power Ranger to show you how he sizes up with other domestics. Next up, we have, oh, here is a Mythic Legends Purplore. And uh, I think that about runs off since we've compared it to a bunch of other Mezcos, which is pretty cool. But I am super excited for this guy. Can't wait to take photos. I hope that you guys will enjoy those photos. Thank you, as always, for watching. I hope that you are being well. I hope that you're doing well. And please, drink your water, guys. Later. Later.